Okay, so we're gonna start out in the periphery, in the spinal nerves. Spinal nerves are nerves that come out of the vertebral column. They are spinal nerves, and the other type of nerves are cranial nerves, which come out of the cranium. So the spinal nerves are, are stereotypical. They're all mixed. They're mixed, and what mixed means in this context means it's, part, it's mixed between motor, autonomic, and sensory. The, they're all jumbled in there, but each individual axon, which is also called a fiber, so when we talk about peripheral nerves, we're talking about axons, but we typically call them fibers. And there are, as it turns out, different types of fibers. So they're jumbled in together, but they are distinct. So one fiber is going to do one function. The function is going to be either motor, autonomic, or sensory, and then within that there's variation. The fibers are separated by whether they're large and myelinated, small and myelinated, or unmyelinated. Now just remember that myelin is a insulatory wrap around axons that allows them to send information, send action potentials much faster. If we had to rely on these, uh, on these unmyelinated axons, we would be both enormous and still slow. Um, but the, uh, the, so the myelin enables us to make relatively small cables and still have information travel quickly. The largest fibers in the peripheral nerves, and this is true for cranial nerves and for spinal nerves, are, have to do with motor function. And this is two, di two different groups. The motor neuron axons, axons coming from the motor uh, neurons. So once the motor neuron fires, you want that message to get to the muscle, no delays. We're not messing around here. We're gonna get that message out. And so these largest fibers, um, which, which send information carry information, carry action potentials the most quickly, um, these are the axons of motor neurons. The motor neuron axons work with both touch and proprioceptive uh, sensory fibers. In fact, um, most of what these sensory fibers uh, do day in, day out is to serve the motor fibers, and we'll come back to that idea um, much later. But because these are serving a motor function, and motor function has to be reliable, we can't be falling over. Gravity is constantly assaulting us. And if we gave in to gravity, if we gave in to the mistakes that gravity can, um, can, can produce in our posture, we would be falling over a lot. Not going to work. And so the information about these errors uh, comes back to the nervous system very rapidly. So these touch and proprioceptive sensory fibers are also very large and, um, and myelinated, and they carry information quickly. The next group is, uh, are neurons that carry things uh, carry stimuli that are going to give rise to uh, perception of pain and temperature. And it may seem a little counter counterintuitive that this is a relatively slow, uh, slowly conducting fiber. But uh, that's, that's the way that evolution has occurred, that all the energy is given to making these guys really big and really fast. And um, the way I think about it is, by the time there's a, there's a change in, in these, the an immediate, a very, very quick reaction is, is, um, is not possible. So these are, are, are slower, but they're still, they're still um, you're still going to get the information in less than a second. The slowest are, um, another group of pain and temperature fibers, and there are differences between this. This is more like a, a, a pricking pain, such as you get if you uh, have a needle 
um, a needle stick. Whereas this is that achy pain where if you get, uh, you stub your toe or you have a sore muscle, that type of thing. Um, and so these are unmyelinated fibers and they go really, really slowly. Another one is itch. Now, if you have a traumatic event, the trauma, the banging into a, a um, into a nerve is not going to distinguish. All, all of these different types of fibers are going to be affected. On the other hand, you can have a, a, a neuropathy, a, um, a condition where the fibers uh, are either damaged or uh, absent. Um, you can have a neuropathy that is going to primarily affect one or, or a or different, one or another different types. So for example, you may have heard of a condition called congenital insensitivity to pain. In individuals with a congenital insensitivity to pain, this is what is, what is affected. Are these small, lightly myelinated, and unmyelinated fibers. Now I should mention one more uh, fiber type, one more uh, function. So there are neurons that, are, that conduct very rapidly. Uh, these are preganglionic, preganglionic autonomic neurons. And then the postganglionic ones, the ones that go from the ganglion to the target, are unmyelinated. And so in individuals who have a congenital insensitivity, insensitivity to pain, they are lacking these and they're lacking these. And so oftentimes uh, they will have a congenital insensitivity to pain and they also be unable to sweat. Why can't they sweat? Because they don't have these nerves. Okay, they don't have those fibers. So this is, um, what's important to realize is that, that, that these different types of fibers have different vulnerabilities. They have different vulnerabilities to genetic mutations, but also to environmental insults. So an example of an environmental in insult is the high levels of glucose associated with uh, with, that occurred in individuals with diabetes. And so, for example, it appears that these larger fibers are more sensitive to, uh, to hyperglycemia, where these are relatively spared. So in general, when we talk about neuropathies, we're going to talk about it, it's a little sketchy, but in general, it's going to be large fiber neuropathies versus small fiber neuropathies versus mixed neuropathies. Now, if you, again, if it's a trauma, all types are going to be affected. If it, is, if it is any kind of an environmental or genetic condition, it might have a preference for either large or small. It probably has a preference. Now let's think about one, let's go over to the slides and think about one more thing, which is regardless of what the problem is, uh, if it's not a trauma, if it's either a genetic condition or a environmental uh, susceptibility, the, neuro, the fibers that go to your hands are way more exposed than the fiber that, for example, goes to your, to your shoulder. This is a short distance. This is a long distance. This, the fiber that goes to your, to your hand has a lot more vulnerability. The fiber that goes to your feet has even more vulnerability. And this gives rise to the very common distribution for, for neuropathies, which is a, called a glove and stocking distribution. And this simply results from the fact that these fibers that are going to innervate the hands and the, and the feet are traveling the longest distance. For example, in diabetic neuropathy, which is extremely common, it is the feet that almost always turn up the first. They become symptomatic the first. By the time somebody has symptoms in their feet, they typically uh, have abnormalities that are subclinical in their hands. So it, neuropathies, neuropathies are important. Why? 
because just as strokes are the number one neurological reason that sends a person to a hospital, neuropathies are the number one reason that sends, a neurological reason that sends per, a person to a doctor, okay? A, types of neuropathies include things such as carpal tunnel syndrome, diabetic neuropathy, uh, and then uh, autoimmune conditions such as Guillain-Barre, uh, and, uh, and a, a set of inherited neuropathies um, that we'll talk more about later. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about spinal nerves.